How's it going? Uh, Sean O'Dwyer from BDP. I'm going to give you an overview of how the design team is using BIM on the, on the project. It's the current uh, BIM model at the moment. Uh, just some images that were done for, at the planning stage. Some CGI's first. <coughs> and then some more <coughs> images of the, of the, uh, of the building from, from the east side. <coughs> and then some uh, more recent images of the, the, the roof garden. The level four view of the biome, and a view from level four at the wards, and some of the uh, courtyards, and then from the Rialto Leo stop. Um, so on the, there's lots of consultants involved in this project, but on the, on the BIM side of things we have BDP, McCall Mann looking after the architecture, O'Connor and Croner looking after the civil, Arab m &E, and Bruce Shaw looking after the, the quantity surveying. We use a common data environment we use for our projects, so all our models are uploaded and downloaded to four projects. We have uh, over 140 Revit models on, on four projects at the moment, and uh, so they're uploaded and downloaded every two weeks. This is where we store all our PDF uh, drawings as well, so they can be accessed. It's, it's cloud based, they can be accessed by, uh, from a tablet or from a phone or from your, from, from your PC. So the software platforms we're using, Revit is the main uh, software platform. Use DWGs from time to time. Uh, DWFs for um, exporting models for using for um, for quantity surveying. Um, PDFs for our drawings, and then we have uh, federated Navisworks models and IFC models for the um, common data environment. Uh, it's a pretty large project, so we have lots of models. As I mentioned, they're split up into small little parts. Um, to some examples, of some of the, to some of the models that we're using. It's a busy existing site model, structure is all, it's all one model. And then our internal models, we've got the, we've got the architectural models split by level. So internal models will contain floors, walls, ceilings, and rooms. And then we have our FF and E models that are also split by levels. So there's 10 levels, 10 models. Uh, building services models, so uh, ARCA split their, their models into, um, into different uh, zones of the building. And then we have our architectural envelope models. And we have our federated models there as well. So um, we have an object naming convention on the project. This is uh, actually come from a previous job that we worked on with BAM. Uh, it's quite simple: role first, uh, whether it's architecture, whether it's engineering, uh, building element type code. So whether you're using a ceiling, a wall, and then a type number one, two, three, size, and then a, a, a secondary description. So this has been used for by the architecture team and the engineers and the structural team. So the idea is then, if you open up a Navisworks model, when you hover over any of the elements in the building, you'll get, first of all, you get a, a snapshot of what the element is based on the, the, the object naming convention. Then as you delve a little bit deeper, you, 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 you get the properties of the element, and say for a wall, for example, you get the, the, fire, uh, the, 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 the fire rating and the acoustic rating, etc. We also have our 2D details. We're trying to make them a little bit more clever, clever than just plain 2D. So the, the elements that we model in the 2D details, we use keynotes then to link them back to the specification. So as you update the specification, whether it's the code or it's description, it'll update then all the details throughout the throughout the project. We do still have sheets on the on the project. So this is how we split up the building. It's quite a large, quite a large footprint. So we've one is to 100 um, sheets and one is to 50 sheets. And this is done across the board with all the design teams so that everybody has the same, same, um, same part of the building on, on their zone. Um, to try and limit the amount of these sheets, we do use master, master views. So we set up a, a master view in Revit, and then, and then we set up uh, a par parent views and then views from that dependent views. So as, as you work on the master file, so most people would work just on the master file, and then the, the individual sheets then automatically get updated. Um, so this is quite good because then we, what we do is we use these, we use these, um, these master views then on, so they can be viewed on tablets rather than flicking through sheets, you know. Uh, we have a Navisworks model, so as I mentioned, the models are uploaded and downloaded every couple of weeks, and we export then all the Revit files using uh, BIM1 add-on for Revit. We export all the MWC files and we, and we create a federated Navisworks model that's then uploaded to the common data environment. And it's accessible for everybody. We set up views within the within the Navisworks model so they can get get around the building. 
and we've also just purchased some uh, license for BM 360 Clue, so we're going to use this demo as, as people start going out on site, it'll give them access to the buildings and access to the information that we've got embedded into the, into the models. A lot of projects you, you find, you'll, you'll, you'll end up with kind of two um, structural models. You'll have the architectural structural model at the beginning, and then you'll have the uh, structural, the engineering structural model later on. <laughs> we had a, an architectural model design, at the, at a structural model at the start. We've, we've, we found that um, as, as the project went on, you, you, you have two models with the same information in them, and, and that's where, where mistakes can happen. So we do a markup system within Revit using the, just Revit clouds. We import the, the structural model into Revit. And then we cloud any, any areas where we see changes need to happen. This model is then sent back to the, to the structural engineer and they update their model um, based on our 2D markups rather than both of us modeling the same thing. Um, we're, the project started some time ago, so we're on the, um, the American system of LOD. So LOD 100 will be concept, 200 design, 300 construction, 400 fabrication, and 500 would be. Um, uh, would be finished on site. So the design team is going to produce uh, LOD 300 for, for, for GMP. That's what has been agreed. We're using the uh, level, of level of development specification uh, from the BIM form to, 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 um, to check to make sure that all our, all our elements are, are LOD 300. There is a new system based on MBS BIM Toolkit, so this is aligned with the RIBA work stages. Um, so that the idea is that this, this system will be used going forward uh, throughout construction. Classification, we're using Uniclass 2015. Uh, so this is currently being uh, embedded into all the models and all the elements. We're using the uh, classification manager for Revit to, 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 to do this. Codebook, as Phelan mentioned, we have over 6,000 rooms. That, that's roughly half a million elements that need to be pushed in and out of Revit models. So they're, so, and they're all managed uh, via Codebook. So Codebook is a, a cloud-based database, and it allows us to push elements in and out of the model. This is an example of some work that we're doing at the moment. This is level six. You can see we're filling up all the rooms with the FFNE elements after all the user group meetings have happened. Another view then from, uh, from ground floor level just showing um, the, the complexity of the, of, of the building. So with all these elements that are linked to the room data sheets, it works both ways. If you make a change to the room data sheets, it'll update the model and vice versa. And then from that, from Revit and, and Codebook, we create these C sheets. And, and there are thousands and thousands of these C sheets, and, and they're being um, updated according to the user group meetings outcomes. Costex has been used by LineSight, maybe Gary will talk a little bit more about it later on, but so the, the idea of Costex is that we export our models to DWFX, issue them to, um, the, to LineSight, and then they can use the, the models then for, for um, working out their quantities. Coordination, this is a view of the, of the model at the moment. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a minefield, and we're working through uh, the coordination process now, uh, all the way up to GMP to make sure that we uh, look after the, 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 the major parts of the building, the, the plant rooms, the, the main articulation and the risers will be the first thing we'll hit. So, so this is the kind of levels of, of clash detection that we're, we're looking at. Level one will be services versus structure and architecture, and then we move on to level two kind of services, clashes between services and services, and then level three will be all of our clashes. So we're using um, a lot of VR, as Phelan mentioned, on the project. I'm just going to give you a quiz of two of the latest kind of VRs that we that we've done on the, on the project. <laughs> so this is a VR that we did recently of the bedroom. So it takes the user inside the bedroom. It's quite good for um, doing user group meetings, etc. Give you a view out the window of the, the level four roof garden. And a view into the, the corridor. And I think this is going to be available outside, so you can have a, have a play around later on if you like. This is the um, a view of the concourse that I mentioned earlier. So this will give you an idea of the concourse, so you can have a look around the concourse. 
And then we have these flying views in the sky. So if you click on this, this will take you to where, where, where you are. <coughs> there's also, if you look down on the ground, there's a, a map to get you around the buildings. Click this. There we go. So this is the map of the building, so you can select where you want to go. So let's see, I'll go down here. This will bring me to this, uh, this end of the building here. This is actually done as well when we were designing the concourse. This was done to have a look at some different finishes on the building. So on the left here, you'll see that the walls are done in metal, but if I click on this, it'll change the, the design of the, of the concourse. Variation, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it, thank you.